And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, your old pal, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Gotham Knights, man. This is an entirely new Batman game featuring the extended Bat family. It doesn't take place in the Arkham universe. I know a lot of people were confused. This is just like a regular old comic book universe where in this one, Batman and Commissioner Gordon are dead and it's up to this ragtag team to move on and mourn Bruce Wayne and solve some of his unsolved crimes and clean up the city. And just so you know, for some housekeeping, uh, we've been playing a review copy provided to us on PlayStation 5. So that's, that's the footage you're looking at here. And this video is going to be spoiler free. If you see something cool here, it was in the trailers or it's fairly early on in the game. Now I'm gonna come right out and say it, I'm not a big fan of Gotham Knights. Yep, for the people that like think I just like everything, here you go. I think even still, I may not be as harsh as some other reviewers. Uh, there are a few redeeming elements here, but ultimately, I'm just really, really sad about this one. I think we can learn from it. Now, I'm gonna be hard on this one because it's coming from a place of love. I was predetermined to like this game. I love Batman, and like, I don't know if he's my favorite superhero, but I've definitely read the most comics around him uh, compared to anyone else. Now, I didn't need a game exactly like the Arkham games either, or anything like that. I just wanted a cool new action superhero comic book game. And there are some elements of that, but I kind of hate to say this, but I'll compare it to Avengers when that launched. It's a handful of cool, well-presented superhero moments and action and cutscenes surrounded by a bunch of mess, you know, grinding, numbers, gears, and flaws. And Gotham Knights isn't even an online game. I do also want to be upfront. Uh, you can ignore a lot of the BS surrounding this game and just have fun fighting Clayface and punching Mr. Freeze and the Court of Owls, as cool versions of your favorite characters. Yes, like there's a regular old video game sort of in here. I don't want to discount that. You might have simpler needs or wants as a player, but for me, it wasn't enough. So just to set you up and what I did like, this game opens immediately after Batman's death. He didn't disappear, like he straight up died and he left a bunch of unsolved mysteries and basically a bunch of Gotham villains are vying for power at once. So it's Barbara Gordon, AKA Batgirl, Dick Grayson, AKA Nightwing, Tim Drake as Robin and former second Robin turned Red Hood, Jason Todd doing their thing together and kind of figuring out how to work as a group and do proper detection detective work and mourn Batman while Alfred kind of shepherds them along. The best selling point of this game is playing as these characters, you know? Conceptually, it's cool to play as Red Hood and shoot some dudes. It's cool to choke out guys with your legs as Barbara. It's cool to play as a proper damn, like, Robin. And seeing these characters react on screen with one another, it's like another comic book or like an animated Batman flick. And it starts strong but it gets old pretty fast. A lot of the game is structured around open world grinding, but it's broken up and kind of overcomplicated to make it seem like you're doing something more complex. You level up your characters by doing activities out in the city on patrol and access some pretty good simple skill trees to add new abilities and passive stat bonuses and stuff. Now, these patrols are kind of like go out, find a random couple of bad guys, interrogate one, and keep doing stuff like this to build up access to premeditated crimes. These are bigger, random, open world crimes like bank robberies that take a couple more minutes to do but net you more rewards. Now, these are actually kind of impressive. It's really cool to like hear an explosion or hear someone breaking in somewhere and find just like a, a block up or a street away, a hole in a wall where like some bank robbers busted in. It feels like natural crime fighting sometimes. Unfortunately, the game wants you to do this over and over and over again. Getting access to certain abilities like your character's ultimate and the cooler traversal moves are locked behind doing say like 10X of this or that. And it's not something you can knock out quickly. It takes a minute and you have to do it for each character individually if you wanna like bounce around between them. So like for me, I spent a good part of the game as Barbara Gordon got her super powerful and then I was like, you know what? I wanna check out Robin. And then I had to go through a huge chunk of the game as this boring Robin who could barely get around the city and had no cool moves. Like without the cool traversal stuff, like a, a cape glide or Robin's teleporting thing or Nightwing's bat glider, getting around is pretty boring. You just grappling hook everywhere and it doesn't feel quite right. Or you hop on the bat cycle and hit the streets. 
And that doesn't really feel quite right either. It's pretty slow. Everything really is slow and simplified and to not have the ability to like glide in an open world Batman game for a while is pretty painful. Now sure, you can argue it's rewarding to finally get access to this stuff, like it's fun to work towards. You know, it is worth the effort, but I think the problem is that it wouldn't feel like a grind if the combat and the stealth was more fun. Now in my preview on my channel, I said I was kind of 50-50 on the combat. I had to see more of it later in the game and now after playing through everything, yeah, unfortunately, it only gets more tedious as you go. Combat, for me, personally, just isn't fun. It has too many enemy types of attacks that are just annoying, and uh, that's like a petty complaint, but the real thing that kills it all is just, I guess, how simple it is. Like, it, it doesn't sound simple, but once you've grinded through some of the open world stuff, you feel it quick, much quicker than other games of this style. So there's light, heavy, and ranged attacks as the base, uh, with a dodge mechanic that feels really unsatisfying. Even if you get a perfect dodge, it's kind of just whatever. Uh, there's also some decent grab stuff that can get a little more creative depending on who you play as. Now, the more you fight, the more you build up a meter called momentum that you can spend on special abilities you open up by like holding down a button and pressing another. Uh, these are abilities like an area effect attack, a powerful interrupt attack, elemental based damage, and more. I'd say uh, of the ones that I'd used, about 50% of them were satisfying to use. The rest just felt like a little too finicky or too quick or just kind of a waste of a good meter burn. It didn't work for me, but there are moments of brilliance. You know, take down a whole crowd flawlessly where everything connects right, the animations look cool, a properly timed batarang throw and your character darting through the air and a slow-mo finisher that looks really cool. That stuff can feel great, but it's either few and far between when it all feels that smooth or or you're just tired of the same thing after a few hours, especially after fighting with the camera. Like the amount of times I got kicked in the ass by an invisible enemy because the camera was stuck somewhere, man. The stealth also leaves a lot to be desired. It's incredibly simple. The game was clearly built as like this co-op or multiplayer open world first type thing with the stealth kind of being limited. Enemies are super exploitable. The amount of times I choked out a dude while another guy was just staring right at me and didn't get alerted was really shocking. There's not a lot of options for distracting enemies or really hiding in many places except for just up above. It's really just crouch walk, kill, repeat. I mean, not kill, they're not killing. But you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes from up above, like all of it just feels clunky. So many games have stealth elements that are this simple, but they still manage to feel entertaining or satisfying. Here, it doesn't quite work. The one positive is that the stealth takedown animations are really awesome and never get old. None of the finishers do. All the animations are awesome, especially Nightwings. Like they just nailed it. This is like probably the best Nightwing video game thing. Uh, also, if you want to push stealth, definitely try Robin. He, he gets some cool abilities that make stealth a little bit better, and Robin is just cool. Now, the main campaign is kind of centered around the Court of Owls mystery, which isn't super long, but it's surrounded by the connecting threads of case file missions that are like side quests, but not, not really, more like full-fledged side arcs. Now, like, what's Harley Quinn up to? Is it time to punch Mr. Freeze again? That type of stuff. And there are parts of these that are absolutely incredible. Some chase sequences, some big over the top cinematic stuff, uh, moments that actually alter and change the open world. There is some good stuff here and this is where it just feels like a proper good old fashioned video game. The boss battles can be damage sponges, sure, but like I, I generally like them all. Unfortunately, the whole case file thing is given the old open world games as a service, but not games as a service type grind. Like do one of those cool missions and then you're halted and you're forced to run around the open world and kill random goons to unlock the next thing or do something. Now, I've played a thousand open world games at this point and I don't mind working my way towards the next thing or mission, but this cynical checklist way of doing it just isn't for me. Combined with an investigation board and a massive list of all the things the game throws at you with some of them having to be triggered from the menu in the belfry while other types of things you can just go towards in the open world, it all just seems needlessly complicated and framed as a different type of game. Along with the loot and gear and RPG systems I mentioned earlier, just endless menus, crafting, crates you find in the world that when you open just literally give you small numbers, just like an unexciting pop of crafting resources. It's loot that helps, yes, uh, towards the end of the game, especially if you're a bit underleveled, but 
ultimately something I didn't need in the game. I wish they just spent their time on something else, something cooler. The skins themselves though are awesome. Like some of them are way more customizable than you'd expect, which I really liked. Uh, you can go for old school-ish styles, uh, the game's designs for these characters, the base designs, which are really cool. I think they're pretty decent or just crazy over the top stuff. Like if you want to be a Batman robot or a Batman ninja, but like with this cool flair to it. I really did love unlocking these and equipping these and messing around with them. I love that stuff and I think they did a decent job with it. Loot RPG stuff forced in here aside. Also played with a friend a bit and uh, performance was decent. It was kind of fun to take down missions with a friend because like when you're playing alone, like I said, so many enemies are damage sponges that it feels like it takes forever to whittle them down. Now with a friend, it seems better or at least it feels better because you're doing it with someone else. I don't know. Uh, players can split up, which is nice, but working together is pretty simple. The most you can do is just grab an enemy, press a button, and then the other player will do a cool team finishing move. There's not really much more to it. A game seemingly built around this co-op is pretty straightforward. They did also just recently, now it's going to be added to the game. It's kind of like a, an additional separate mode. It's going to be four player co-op. I haven't played that. I don't know what that really entails yet, but that's kind of like a side thing. This here, what we've played is the main thing. Ultimately, the bottom line, the most important thing for me with a game is fun fact. I can have fun doing combos in a game. I can have fun just enjoying a story in a game. It doesn't really matter where that fun lies. It just has to really have it. And ultimately with Gotham Knights, I was bored. It's a shame too, because I personally, and I, I might show my ass here, I like the Gotham City that they built here. Yes, if you compare it to Arkham games, sure, I get it, but take it as its own, just like as another comic book representation of Gotham. I think it's a good one with distinct neighborhoods, cool graffiti, advertisements, just a real genuine attention to detail and, and a good layer of grime to it. It's got a nice moodiness to it. It's not like a hyper Gothic city or super dark or anything, but it's a definitely a cool one. It's just empty and lifeless. Now, despite that, the world itself and the Belfry base and all of it is hidden with fun nuggets of Batman Easter eggs and references and cool stuff like some really deep DC Comics cuts, some silly Batman jokes. A lot of the iconic locations are there and there's just some joy to be had in checking out all this stuff like down to the emails on the Bat computer that you can read. It, it's good lighthearted Bat fun. The story and the way it's presented is pretty good. And it's broken up because of the game's structure though. So it, it's like a bit all over the place. But many cutscenes are filled with little emotional exchanges between characters that work. I really like Dick Grayson's voice actor, but the rest I didn't really care for too much. The moment to moment stuff is good. The story as a whole, you know, while starting strong, uh, didn't really do it for me. There's an insanely predictable villain reveal thing. And uh, unfortunately, I think they didn't do as much as they could with the whole Batman is dead thing. It was such a huge thing. And I think they squandered some of that opportunity. Maybe not so much as what's said here, but the feeling, the tone set behind it. I was expecting something a little different here, but that's just my expectations. So that's probably more subjective to me. And uh, yes, I saved it for last, but I'm playing on PlayStation 5. And as you know, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series versions of the game are running at 30 frames per second. I think it's good. We demand more from our games. We definitely want more than this. I did not like playing at 30. I got used to it, but it's so much better to have choice in compromise with modes, you know? Hopefully we don't lose that. But I saved it for last because it was like the least of the issues with the game here. That might sound harsh, but again, there was a lot of potential for this game and I, I just wanted more. Something more fun to play moment to moment. Something without the cynical grind game design holding you back from the fun stuff that's in here. You know, something designed to keep you playing, but not just kind of in a checklist way, but more in a fun factor way. And of course, just like a standout comic book game tale. This game, Gotham Knights, is close, but no cigar. I don't think it's like a disaster 2 out of 10 game or anything, but unfortunately it was just a boring one for me. But of course, that's a before you buy. You know how it goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. If you are looking forward to Gotham Knights, I do not wanna poop on your parade at all. So let me know what you are thinking after you've read or watched some reviews. If you're watching this after the game has come out, we would love to know your first impressions and who you're playing as. Let's talk anything really Gotham Knights down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It genuinely helps us out. But that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.
Your team is winning our zero.